this just fantasy or is this uh, one of the best fantasy comics ever? And yes, it's that one. Uh, this is Fafford and the Grey Mouser. So this is a comic adaptation of the Fritz Lieber uh, characters, uh, the barbarian and the kind of rogue. Um, and I have multiple comics out here because uh, there's been a couple of different attempts at adapting these characters to the medium. Um, the first was, of course, the Sword of Sorcery books, which came out uh, in the early 70s, and this was like during the the sword and sorcery boom of that era. And I want to say that the sword and sorcery boom in media period was mostly the 70s and 80s. And this is more or less at the beginning, and this is more or less at the end. And we're going to be talking about this adaptation today, but I just wanted to point out that it started here with, uh, yeah, Sword of Sorcery. And we will talk about this book and the subsequent issues of the, uh, I guess you could say five issue series. Uh, but for right now, I want to talk about the, I think, greatest adaptation of this work, as well as uh, one of just the best fantasy comic series ever. So let's just get into it. So this is issue one of Fawford and the Grey Mouser uh, that came out in the, the late 1980s. This is under the uh, Epic Comics uh, imprint that Marvel had. It's basically the uh, Vertigo uh, equivalent that DC had in the 90s. This is just Marvel in the 80s. And there's, they actually released a uh, anthology magazine called Epic Illustrated that I'll definitely be talking about in the future that just, be, it was basically Marvel's uh, attempt to compete with the likes of uh, Heavy Metal and uh, the Warren books like 1984, 1994, and just, yeah, all those kind of adult illustrated uh, magazines. And so Epic was Marvel's version of that. And there were some really good comics in there that I want to talk about. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, this, uh, this, I can't say enough about this. This is um, an adaptation of the most popular story. This, this is issue one of the Fawford and the Grey Mouser, which is Il Met and Lankmar, um, which is basically how the two characters meet. And we have uh, Howard Chaikin doing the ad adapting of Fritz Lieber, uh, another great comic artist and writer. And then we have Mike Mignola on art duty and uh, Al Williamson inking for him. Um, and... Uh, I believe it's uh, Van Valkenburg for colors, I think, Not, um, or maybe letters. I can't remember, but this is, so this is, I guess, early 90s technically, but this is the tail end of the sword and sorcery boom, and boy, what a way to go out uh, with the yeah, best, one of the best fantasy comics, uh, I think, ever. And this is, to me, like how you can render fantasy in an exciting and visually arresting way. But of course, it's Mike Mignola. So, you know, there's no way you could go wrong with it because uh, he is, uh, without a doubt, my favorite comic artist and also just a very influential figure on me creatively uh, as a writer and an artist. And so this is his... Uh, art of course on the cover we have his his bold uses of of black and silhouette here his stylized figures um heavy shadows um and just yeah this is this is a pre hellboy um mike mignola this is this is um bef and yeah and it's also definitely uh looks different than his work does now but he's an artist who's evolved and evolved in a beautiful way but I'm just somebody who, um, at every stage of his career, I just am enchanted by it. So we're going to just get right into it. So 
So for starters, we got a map. Yay us, we got a map of, of Lankmar and and our Nuhun, I should say. Um, and yeah, Lankmar is like this this big city that uh, exists in uh, this world. And uh, it is, um, yeah, this opening page here, we get a great first image. So like just lovely, lovely line art, lovely, lovely hatching there by uh, Al Williamson. Al Williamson is such an incredible artist himself, but just the fact that he's inking Wignola is, I think, why I enjoy it so much. Um, and just, yeah, great silhouette of this town. It's like buildings upon buildings. Um, love the color work, yeah. Yeah, the color work here is, yeah, by Sherilyn Van Valkenburg is just gorgeous. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna mostly just talk about the visuals of it. And just, yeah, the, the rendering of this, this town. I mean, Mignola loves his old buildings. And it shows here. Um, but just, yeah, great color work here. This, this kind of dim, dingy place. You know, we have rats and... I love these figures. Yeah, just just these silhouettes coming here. Cheap Street, um, and this is honestly a really great adaptation of the story because I've I've you know read the story source material and this is just it's very loyal to it, but it also just tells it at a great pace, you know, and um, just these great faces and also great costuming, you know, it's. A lot of cases, it's it's simple costumes, but yet really effective. Um, and yeah, and Fafford and the Grey Mouser, they both had the same idea of of uh, attacking these these thieves uh, by coloring, by like painting themselves and pretending to be statues. And it's uh, it's you know just really great action here. I um, mean, just yeah, love that thin the thinnest of lines to denote the 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 path of that punch and I love just yeah the straight black for the legs and the simple lines for those silhouettes of the of the legs to the feet it's just yeah and then yeah and also just these these fun onomatopoeias popping in here it just adds to the, the comic flavor to it and uh and Mignola I love his adding of these little insert shots of these uh, just, just the surroundings, it just adds to the, the world that we're in. And, uh, yeah, this is our folk, our two guys meeting for the first time and they both have the same purpose and they, they want to, you know, take out these, these thieves. Um, and, uh, yeah, like we have, and I gotta say the, the featuring of this rat is, is more significant, uh, later on in the story than it, it seems now. Uh, but just love these little like 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 the bricks in the background. His rendering of the of the world is so nice. I love yeah. He's putting his foot in this guy's neck basically, and they both take him out. And then, but yeah, we get a good sense of of our characters. I love the the size difference in them. I mean that's something that's as described I guess in the books, but it's also just yeah, it's a great way to have distinct silhouettes for both of them. And uh, just, yeah, look at these, look at this great face here. Uh, so, you know, the action continues. And the basic, I want to tell you the basic plot of this story, which is, you know, they both, uh, they, there's a thieves guild in town and nobody's supposed to go against them, but they're relatively new to Lankmar and to the, the area. And they both have their reasons for for going after these these thieves and, and taking their loot. Um, uh, for one, uh, uh, Fawford, who's our, our big barbarian guy here, um, he uh, his girlfriend is uh, used to be he uh, wanted to be a, a member of the thieves guild, but uh, was basically betrayed and wasn't allowed in because it's a boys' club. 
And so she was she wants to destroy them and he has vowed to take care of that for her and Mouser doesn't really have as much invested in it, but he becomes very charmed and taken in by Fawford, and so he decides, oh, we're going to help you. But then they get drunk, and they decide, we're going to go scout it out and check it out tonight, and it doesn't really go very well, but there's some really great, fun action here. Um, again, great color work, great, great, you know, and this is, this is again, early Mignola, so um, he, he became a, a lot more... Uh, like even more like expressionistic with his his work. And so this is him uh, being a little bit more figural with it. Um, and I'm not, I love both, both sides of Mignola. So this is just to me like exemplary stuff when it comes to uh, his, his more figural days. Um, and we meet... Uh, uh, Fawford's uh, girlfriend, and I just love you know this set of panels here where they're they're coming up on her. I love the simplification of the figures back there. Um, you know, not a you know, and the fact that she's at under the sign of Cash and Cash Street and Horse Street, um, and then uh, you know I love this you know the 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 dialogue balloon being the shape of a heart when they kiss. Um, but then immediately she's pissed off at them because like, why didn't this, like some of them got away and she's like, why didn't you fucking kill them? And so, uh, yeah. And then like, uh, gray mouser decides I'm going to take you to my place. So he has a place above the silver eel, which is a bar. Um, and yeah, just love this split panel here. And it's, you know, this, you know, like, I love, like, the, the lettering design up here. Like, it's just, you know, it's specific enough to know where you are, but yet it's atmospheric. You know, and I think atmospheric is just a word I'm just going to do to death uh, because I think it's just that important. And also I love the little, I guess, silver eel on the door here in Bones Alley. Um, and yeah, so we have, uh, them climbing up these rickety, uh, this, these rickety ass stairs up to the top of this place. And, uh, they have lots of beer and we have, uh, Fawford, uh, you know, basically, uh, squaring up a storm, trying to get up these stairs. And then he finds this amazing little, uh, place up here. And here we have, uh, Gray Mouser's girlfriend. Um, who the, the, the origin stories for both of these characters have yet to be adapted into uh, comic form, which is, I think, a shame. Um, I would love to do, I mean, me would love to do a companion series to this one, adapting some of the stories they never got around to adapting, uh, including their origin stories. But yeah, we learn about who these women are in those and how they got them, how they got here uh, to Lankmar. Uh, but yeah, they all just kind of get along and they got snacks, they got drinks, and they just, you know, they're, they're hanging out. And I just, yeah, I love these. Yeah, like great costuming, great set settings, but also, yeah, like kept open enough. Look at the, the cool, like just the really cool way he renders the light on these candles, these little like orbs and stuff. It just, it reads properly and it's just, yeah, it's, it's also just such an interesting way to render it. And we're gonna get some really interesting renderings coming up with like how he does like certain like magic things. Um, but yeah, here's them basically, dr you know, drinking and, car and carousing and then they decide we're out of beer, so let's go get some more. Um, yeah, great postures, great expression. Look at that. It's great stuff. And then, yeah, look at this interior of, uh, you know, sweaty Lankmar Tavern. You know, we have these other figures in here, like chowing down, eating, and stuff like that. You know, swords up on the wall, these figures in the back. Like, it's... It is just all the yeah the kind of rendering that i would want and i also love the coloring the coloring 
here is perfect. And here they are being, uh, you know, getting rid of these rats, looking at them. But again, the rats are going to be more significant later. Um, but basically they decide, you know, they figure out, you know, you know what they're getting involved in and then ultimately deciding we got to go check out the Thieves Guild. Um, yeah, this guy's throwing a bottle at him, but he doesn't, he's completely unfazed by it. And here we get a sense, a little, a little sense of their, their backstory, or at least Blana's backstory of, uh, oh, him seeing her as a, you know, perform, a dancer and they escape the, the wintry place that they, he's from. What are the sausages up in the, up here and the cheese? Makes me hungry. Um, yeah, and then she tells the you know, story of uh, how they, they, he had, she was, had a lady friend who they were going to be thieves outside of the Thieves Guild, but then the thieves, you know, struck out against them, and so they've been trying to get her revenge, and so he decides, I'm going to help you get your revenge, and we're going to go and, and check out the, the Thieves Guild, and even though we're kind of drunk, um, just, yeah, love, just, yeah, everything on display here. And sometimes there's a lot of, de there's, you know, there's a lot of text. They're getting a lot of story <clears throat> done in those texts, and the dialogue is actually really nice. Um, it is uh, mostly from Lieber, you know, and then there's um, prose sections that are turned into dialogue to kind of move the story along, and I just, I really enjoy it. Um, I also love that, yeah, he's getting more drunk and he's just desperate to impress his girlfriend. They're both desperate to impress their girlfriends. And so, yeah, they're going to drunkenly go check out the Thieves Guild. I really love that panel. Looks great. I love every panel. So, yeah, here we have some great atmospheric uh, images. More atmospheric. Love, like, yeah, like the articulation of the buildings up here and then the long, empty stretch and then down here. And I just love how the kind of shakiness of the bottom here is done. How we don't even bother with rendering, like, the feet because it's just, that's how much smoke is there because everybody's burning coal and it's just, like, yeah, this gross, smoky place. And, yeah, this, this great panel right here. And also, I just love the little the random signage everywhere. Oof. That's so fun. So one thing I like about Fawford and the Grey Mouser is that there's a great sense of humor to it. Like, here they are. They're trying to, like, dress themselves up as, as beggars. And so they're, like, putting dirt on themselves and, and being half blind. And, like, he's pretending like he doesn't have a leg. Like, what a, what a great, fun image. But, yeah, they're also, like, throwing like mud and shit on everybody and he's also like walking too fast because he's not used to pretending but yet he's kind of like a trickster kind of character so he's a natural at pretending to be what he isn't you know and this funny little interaction where this lady with you know her her rich boyfriend is like i'm gonna kiss this 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 poor blind beggar because he's handsome and uh that's just the way Grey Master goes, because he's this, yeah, dashing rogue character. You know, you gotta, yeah, just a fun one. And so, yeah, they're going, yeah, so I guess there's, like, a beggar's guild that works with the thieves guild that they're pretending to be to get into his place. So here we go. This is, this is the ultimate when it comes to why I think this is great fantasy art. So, um... They're making their way in, and we're seeing like that, like they're educating people on you know being agile and stealing. You know, they're educating children even about stealing, and they're they're teaching them how to pick locks at a fast rate. You know, and they're you know they got you know a dining hall and stuff like that, and they're teaching them how to fight and. 
that's just yeah like it's just such great concise storytelling like just yeah d done mostly visually and i just love the, yeah, the silhouettes of these locks so awesome and this food here and the fighting but here we go okay so remember how i said that rendering a a, a foreign language uh in in like symbols and sigils is better than writing out like what they're saying well this is even more so i think uh not only a brilliant move uh design wise and art wise but also just brilliant when it comes to the way you render a in a fantasy way magic so you see these like kind of alchemical symbols and you know whatnot like this is the speaking of a spell and one just the design of it looks amazing but also like you don't know like you, like i don't know i have to imagine purely on me what it sounds like and i think that's that's where the invitation of the the artist is happening here is is you come up with what it sounds like but it also has a complete it's this fearful mystery to it and i also so love their reactions to it but look at this image of a sorcerer doing his dark work and i just love how mysterious and ugly and dark magic is in uh fritz lieber's work magic is is like a dark spooky business and we have this these you know this creepy uh device going on here it's like mad science and yet we have these like weird symbols going on like that is how you do magic that's how you do a magic spell in comic form uh, in such a visual medium and I love like the, all the little legs on this thing. I love his little rat friend here like it's just it's such an amazing image That's just like that that is magic that is that is sorcery and yeah, just the way he renders the the the, the speaking of the spell I think is is the brilliant stroke here yeah, we have these things that look like lassos or, or ropes or, you know, like, you know, and appearing in the glass. And then we get a look at this gross wizard with his rat-like face and his little rat friend that talks to him. And that's how you don't trust rats. And then, yeah, like this guy with this cool, look at this, like, wild-looking design on the front of his outfit and his, his scrolls um yeah like he's he's a fucking creep uh, and he's the thieves guild's wizard you know and then here we come with the the master of the thieves guild talking with our our boys um and they they're they're discovered they're found out and i love this big map of of like the city plan of lankmar here i think that's such a cool detail yeah and just great faces great dynamics everything and yeah so like they're they're trying they're trying to play it off smooth and get out of this one because you know if it's you know because he because uh the gray master is pretty clever i also love this this simple crosshatch that like just adds so much to each individual panel just adds just fills the space and then yeah here comes the sorcerer and i love that he's just this eerie silhouette i love these these kind of atmospheric like horizontal lines coming in i don't see saying atmospheric um cutting in to just add like like he almost brings like this mist in with him the fucking creep um and yeah i love the little light coming in from these lanterns and yeah the great costuming look at that also the distinction of like giving him blue help yeah helps just make him that more distinct yeah and this motherfucker yeah he's the worst he's so fucking gross but yeah so basically they are like but they're being found out and so then you know they have to get out a little bit of this guy's costume but he's he's the head of the 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 uh, 
Beggar's Guild. And he's like, I never heard of these guys. And so then they just start fighting their way out of here. Um, you know, this guy's reaching for a weapon. But yeah, like, Fafra here going ham on these guys. Just, just really love it. Great physicality, great expression. And, yeah, without a doubt, like, yeah, they're they're cutting themselves free, his leg free so that he can run. Um, look how tall this eerie motherfucker is, and I think it's just yeah, it's further to distend like the magic, you know, in him, and that it's unsettling and it's gross. So great. So yeah, like yeah, we're. They're, they're dealing with these guys and escaping. Just a fun little, like, action scene. Again, like, great mix of comedy and action and suspense. It's got it all. And, and all on top of that, really gorgeous art. Like, just look at the, the, look at the temperature change from the inside of this place. Which, look at this great panel. This great gargoyle here. That, you know, I love the articulation of these stairs. It's just like just the tops of them I and mean, I get the information I know what we're doing love his silhouette here there like it's just it all builds the square top uh, sword again so you can just instantly understand what like what's happening here what's happening there all of it and then yeah the temperature change changes immediately with the sky out here in the night and the orange there showing where they came from Whoa, yeah, what a great fight. So we have a great action scene here. Um, just, also just a little breakouts of expression and just, just, yeah, it's just a fun, but also like dark atmosphere. And then this panel down here is, uh, in my opinion, just an iconic panel. It's a great Magnola panel just great yeah his, his distinct simplification of the figures and and just expressive uh yeah rendering um in yeah just a um yeah in an action scene you know with these these great little wisps of smoke you know i love how like yeah this this towering uh chimney comes to this like just a pure silhouette up at the top of this little like air balloon here like it's just yeah it's it's a, it's as exciting and evocative for me as like a frank frazetta image where it's like uh, like the fact that these figures aren't like i can't see much of them but yet i still get a sense of who they are and the, how they're different uh like it makes me want to invites me to tell a story with them in, in my own mind. And yeah, all the little details here just further are amazing. Just, yeah, in, an amazing level of, of, of storytelling, but also like, you know, kind of uh, openness to the, the viewer here. Like just great stuff, you know, ends in a, in a cataclysmic crash. And, you know, we've got these great little doves here, or pigeons, you know, awesome little uh, gargoyles. And it looks like they're using slings to attack them. Like, yeah, just also another great silhouette. Oh, man. Just looking at his work makes me want to draw. You know, and I think that's what great, that's what great artwork does and great storytelling does. Yeah, and so, like, yeah, we get into, you know, they're, they're, they're making their way through. We get to, like, there's these big fog banks that come through Lankmar. It's just this nasty nasty city you know and yeah mur between murder alley and the street of thinkers here but just yeah what, what a well articulated street just love the style of the buildings uh and just it just i feel i feel excited looking at it you know and then here we are back to the silver eel you know that that specific this guy's holding his blind sign upside down, which is a great little detail. Um, we get the same sign, the little silver eel symbol on the front. Yeah, and it's, it's and also another double panel, which is I love that kind of mirroring them going going here originally, 
and yet like it also returning to a location just makes it more feel like it's more of a real place you know but they're they're laughing about you know how they almost died which shows like the kind of cavalier attitude they have and I love, I look at this sign, Nat, Natic Nibble Fingers, tailor to gentlefolk and others. Just, and like this fish, like these, these little details that just fill out the world, you know, and it's like, these are our main characters, but like the world itself is also a very well articulated character. And yeah, just love their, yeah, their playful attitude when it comes to all this life and death stuff. And, you know, but they made it through, right? And so they're going back to their girlfriend. They're going to tell them about the jolly adventure they had. And, but they're like, oh, no, they're angry at us. Uh, and then they uh, enter in, and it's not looking good. There's all this skittering going on. And it's because there's just rats covering, covering the floor. And they attack the rats, getting rid of them. And we see the corpses of their girlfriends, which is, this is so fucking grisly. Like, look at the skeletal remains. Like, they were eaten to death by rats. It is horrific. And this is, yeah, this is the wizard's doing. Looks like Velana got one one in with her, her dagger, her silver dagger. But, uh, everybody, but yeah, they, they weren't able and they were just mauled by rats you know so yeah that, that that wizard and his little rat friend are to blame and they took yeah they took the, the loot back and yeah it's like their 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 smiles are gone and yeah this is very dark and that's the kind of you know turn that you know these stories these kinds of stories can have yeah and then they decide uh we're burning we're burning this place to the ground What a what a great fiery explosion! Just great word design, sound design. Uh, the fire looks hot. The ex it looks like it's exploding, which is just excite you know great and just another more more great silhouettes from the great Magnola. And they are out for blood. And he's swinging this flaming sensor around, and he's gonna. Yeah, look at, yeah, this great, like, he's swinging, yeah, this flaming thing over, like, you know, it's this exciting Im image, and they, but they're, like, they are getting vengeance, and, yeah, like, this is, this is what happens when they're not just fucking around. This is what happens when they get serious, and, yeah, they, you know, they take it to them. You know, throwing this flaming shit. Look at this, this is a very... Hellboy panel. I can imagine, and then they have to take on the fucking thieves guild, and it's just the two of them, and they look like they're you know demons from hell itself, and they start running, terrified, but yeah, just also like great image here again, like just it's it's under underappreciated is like kind of the the casual costume design that needs to be done in, in stories like this, you know, and and prop design. And yet, like, you put in enough details in there, you use a similar enough garb over and over again, but then, like, it just, it works. And then here they come. They're out to face uh, the real culprit behind this death, which is this nasty rat man. Um, and, yeah, like, these these horrible, like, giant, like, spiders that may or may not be real attacking them. Like, it's... It's all great magic stuff, and, like, I just love, like, the arrogance of this thing. This guy, this rat man and his rat friend. Yeah, and they're fighting giant spiders, and then he starts to speaking his spell again. And just, yeah, like, it, it's all horrible and, and atmospheric, and he's surrounded by rats. Like, it is such a, an, uh, just such a great scene. And like they are just desperate to get this, get this motherfucker. And here he goes. He's hurling his dagger at him. And I, just, I love, yeah, this this set of panels. He throws it, and we have this like mid, you know, middle of the journey. Sticking the spell. 
and it gets caught in a t the tiniest of web and stuck. And he's like, he feels like he's invincible. But we have one last hope, and that's the v Volana's dagger here. And yeah, this is just, he's just a, a nasty, gross, and I, and I also love, this is very Frazetta too, is this, this, this very open atmosphere, you know, you know, like use of color for the background because that's not what's important. And it's also, yeah, like all these horrible rats, they're about to get the same fate as their girlfriends, but he gets the dagger out and he throws it. And he's trying to speak his spell, but it does no, no good. This horrible rat man dies of the rat bastard that he is. Right in the fucking eye. What a throw. And then the whole place explodes. And it's just... It's action. That nasty rat gets skewered. Again, very a very Hellboy image. Which is high praise. Yeah. And yeah, they've, they've taken care of it. And they... they and, you know, the, what started off as a light-hearted uh, frolic... That's you know gone dark and I don't know that's that's it's a lot of complexity for for such a short story, you know and they have their their gold but you know what the fuck do they want it for because you know people that gave them joy are now gone. Yeah, it's a downbeat ending, but it's yeah it's the promise of more journeys together because yeah they have each other now so yeah the start of a great journey together in here and that is Fofford and the Grey Mouser issue one what a, you know, so this, yeah, this to me is some of the heights that fantasy comics can get to. Uh, just, you know, great action, beautiful, beautifully rendered world, interesting characters, uh, just a, a, a mysterious and dark and exciting, you know, uh, form of of magic and and yeah it's just this this is you know if i have any like great references for like what's a classic work of fantasy fiction in comic form and i this is probably top on the list is Fawford and the gray mouser um just yeah great work by everybody involved um there's a collected edition that you can buy uh, this is a more modern Magnola cover, of course, but it has all of the um, the same you know stories in it. It's it's the whole set of stories collected, um, and then they're about to release an omnibus version of this, which is essentially it's the same thing, except it also will have these versions as well. So it'll have our the uh, sword of sorcery stories in it, uh, which also has uh, Howard Chaykin involved. So I guess Howard Chaykin really loved these characters. But yeah, so that was Ill Met in Lankmar. And if you want to see more work that uh, is heavily influenced by the the admirable work in done by. Mignola, Chaikin, Williamson, and Van Valkenburg in this comic, then I recommend my own comic, Sidequesters. Uh, this is the first eight issues collected into one volume. And while I don't quite draw like Mignola, I definitely am inspired by him. And uh, wherever I can put a bit of his magic uh, in my art. Um, it's uh, it's about another fan uh, duo in a fantasy world going on adventures. 
Um, it's just that mine's a, a noble warrior and her new best friend, who's a giant lizard man. Um, you can buy this collected volume on my website. You can also buy the individual issues. Uh, and you can also read it on Global Comics. For more Tales of Dark Magic, I also have uh, my Haxen short story series that is just short stories about magic users. And they all take place in the same world as side questers, so they're all related. And uh, these are available to read on Global Comics, but you can also buy your own copies of it on my website. And for something a little different, I have my three panel origin webcomic series. Uh, it's in the vibe of, say, Mystery Men or The Tick, where I create a character and tell their origin in three panels. Um, this is a collection of the first three years with revamped art. Um, and uh, you can buy this on my website as well as this book of short stories called 3PO Comics. Uh, it's all silly and fun, and uh, it's just, yeah, this is your vibe. Go for it. So, uh, there'll definitely be more talk of the further adaptations of Fawford and the Grey Mouser. I'll talk about Sword of Sorcery. I'll talk about the further issues of this, but I just wanted to start strong uh, with, uh, yeah, one of the best uh, fantasy comics, I think, uh, ever made.